Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over why it is you should be doing a value study. And in order to do that, I'm going to be doing a black and white equestrian painting every single day for a week. So let's jump in. Before we dive into the why, let's talk about supplies really quickly. For paint, I'm using titanium white and ivory black. For brushes, I'm using a flat and a round. They're honestly not any particular brand. They're pretty generic. These are cheap brushes that I just use for a lot of these quick studies. So now that that's out of the way, why do we paint in just black and white? Well, this is called a value study because technically you're actually only using one color. White is considered the absence of color. So you're only really using black in order to determine the values of what you're seeing. Because you're focusing on only one or two colors, depending how you want to look at it, you can really hone in on your skills in regards to value. Really, in order to have a realistic painting, value is the most important thing. You can get away with colors being slightly off, but you're definitely going to notice if your value is off, and it's going to take away from the realism. Value studies essentially take the complexity of color out of the situation so that it's really, really focusing on making sure you're able to identify values in the right place. It's a valuable tool to learn and study and master before you add the complexity of color. Now that we're done with that, let's talk about some of these paintings as we go through it. So this first one, is a photograph done by Madeline DB. I love and adore her. You've probably heard her name before because I'm obsessed with her photos, but I wanted to start off with this one because of the simplicity in comparison to some of the other ones that are coming up. There was something about it that just felt really inviting and because it was my first one doing black and white, really it was just a gut instinct that I was like, okay, I feel like I could paint this well today and that's why I picked this and started off with this one. Why I picked it as a photo to paint in the first place, I honestly just think it was the contrast that I see. It was a beautiful photo and I just really wanted to have the opportunity to paint it. So that leads me into this one. I remember this day because there was also a lot going on outside of the art studio. And so I picked one that had a simple background so that I could save time because I knew essentially this is for me to learn and practice and study horses as well. And I wanted to make sure that I was doing the horses thoughtfully, carefully, and that I was really maximizing my efforts when painting. And I wasn't all too concerned on making sure the background was perfect. So this was a great painting for this day because the background went in so quickly and it saved me a lot of time so that the hours I did have for that day, I could really just focus on making sure the horse was really good. This is another painting from a photo done by Madeline DB and she just has such a good eye for photos and there was just something about the composition and the way 
the horse's facial expression, the way that the background was in comparison to the horse that I just honestly found beautiful and I love the look of the horse itself. So that's why I wanted to paint it. And I think I ended up doing actually a pretty good job. When I was going through this, I started off with dark values first, just to kind of map in where things needed to go. And then I actually put in more of a mid-tone. This is all a la prima. So I'm completing these in one day, which means I do have to think about layering quite a bit. You can only put so many layers of oil paint on top of each other before it becomes muddy. And in that regards, I'm also, if there's anything that needed to be white, like the froth and the foam on his mouth, I left that blank because you can't, you're, you're not gonna get a pure white if you're putting on top of already put down wet paint. So hopefully that made sense. For day three, I adored the facial expression on this horse. It is, of course, another photo by Madeline DB. Another shout out to her. But the way that she captured this horse's expression, just, I fell in love with it. His eye looks very intelligent, but also a little bit on the softer, maybe a sensitive kind of horse. It, it definitely looks like a very intelligent but sensitive horse. And I love that. And I love the way that it was just a beautiful black and white photo. So I felt that it fit this quite well. It also had more of an emphasis on just the horse itself, which is what I wanted to practice was equestrian portraits. So I had these already as a collection in my phone as potential paintings. And that's how this whole idea of doing a week of value studies came to be. It was because I wanted a reason to paint all of these black and white paintings. However, I didn't want to do them as a big piece. I just wanted to do kind of, I just wanted to do them and get them done and get that sensation of like, ooh, I'm inspired and then completing it. And that doesn't always happen with big paintings. So. That's why I kept them small and easy and to the day. Also, I love how that boot turned out. I felt like I did the boots so well. <laughs> Strange flex, but yeah, that was, I love how that turned out. So this one was definitely one of the more complex ones in regards to making sure that values were very accurately done because there isn't as big of a value change in the entire painting or the entire image. So also just the, the musculature and something about it felt a little bit more complex than the other ones, which is why I saved it for day three. I had plenty of time today to sit down and work on this, which it did take a very long time. Well, all day. But I also was getting way more familiar with just black and white paint and like how to use it and how to layer it. And like I was saying, you know, I save anything that needs to be white, I keep blank. But other than that, I start dark and then I do a mid-tone over everything and then I'll add the highlights last and I'll just like lightly put it on top of the mid-tone layer. I found that that helps a lot and it to some extent kind of mutes the white so it's not just crazy stark white. It keeps it in a very realistic value.
So then this last one, I remember this day because I was getting so much closer to going on my trip to Italy and I was so excited that I was having a really hard time focusing and I also knew that I only had so long to get paintings done before I left. So I'm not gonna lie, I completely rushed this one, but I ended up loving it because of that. So the reason I picked this image specifically, this one was done by Shelby Phillips Photography. It actually, I love the shape of the pony's neck and the fact that it was majority dark and I loved the lines that was in the light. There was something about it. It felt very aesthetically pleasing. And so I wanted to give it a try. And I, I loved the dark and moodiness of it. I knew that it was gonna take being quite accurate just to make sure that that depth did come across properly. But anyways, I did rush through it a little bit, but I ended up loving it for it because there were bolder brush strokes um, it's not necessarily perfect, but it's kind of more, it has more movement to it than if it maybe was exactly perfect. It was a great end to the painting. It was nice and pretty simple and, you know, allowed me to finish up strong and then get ready to go on my trip. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you loved it. I had a blast making them. Every single one of these paintings are available through my website. You can find that in the description box below. And as always, thank you so much for joining and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you.